what makes you different is why you're here. What makes you different is what makes you special and what pushes you forward to be where you are in this industry. And don't lose that. Everybody can be what everybody wants them to be. Nobody can be you. Only you can be you. originally on the path of going into finance. That's what you thought you'd do. Yeah. What job did you have in mind? I wanted to be the CFO of a company. I wanted to even maybe run my own company someday, which I still might do. <laughs> There's lots of opportunities for running my own business at this point still. But uh, it's I'd always loved economics and loved finance, and, and it was something that I was incredibly passionate about. But I ended up doing a community theater show as a favor to a family friend. You know, I was a kid that would try anything, and why not? And from the moment that I stepped on stage, I knew that this is what I had to do for the rest of my life. And, and I couldn't look back. You grew up in the Midwest, in Missouri, mm -hmm. and you were on Broadway when you were 13. Yeah. How did that happen? An actress that I worked with um, had come back to New York, was in A Little Night Music, which is the show I ended up in, and they needed an immediate replacement for the show. And so she said, oh, you have to look at this girl from Kansas City. I just worked with her. I think she'd be great for this. So I get a random phone call saying, hey, you have an audition for a Broadway show in two days if you'd like it. And a week later, I'm living in New York City and working on a Broadway show. I never in a million years thought I'd book the show. And there I was. And what went through your mind in terms of your own life and what you expected it to be versus what it might become in that moment? I was so excited and it was completely unexpected, but I was, I was a little, a bit, scared, but trepidatious, because I was stepping outside of my comfort zone. I was moving to a brand new city and starting a brand new life, and I didn't know what it would be, but I made a decision then and there to just say yes to whatever opportunities come my way in life. But you still pursued business. You got your degree when you were 17 years old. Yeah. What, first off, you were 14 when you graduated from high school. Mm -hmm. So you kind of sped things up a little bit there. A little bit, yeah. What was it like going to college when you're 15, 16 years old? It was very interesting, I'll, I'll be honest with you. I started, uh, before I moved to New York, I did a semester of dual enrollment when I was in Kansas City. And I was still in the drama program. But uh, then when I moved to New York to do a little night music, um, the schools here won't let you work in the industry and go to school in those departments at the same time. So I was faced with the choice of, do I quit the show that I just moved to New York to do? Do I quit going to school at 14? Or do I switch majors? And I spoke to a lot of the people in my cast and they had told me, look, you are doing what you would be going to school to do. So why not get a more well-rounded education and look at another interest and do something else? And I immediately thought of business and finance. So it, it turned out to be sort of the perfect uh, balance of everything because I was able to learn how to read contracts. I was able to learn how to manage my finances. Do you read your own contracts? I do. I do. My attorney always uh, makes sure to have time to go over my contracts with me because I have at least 20 questions every time I get a contract. A lot of young people, especially yeah. people who get in when they're younger, exactly. get taken advantage of when they start out. That didn't happen to you. No, and I refuse to let it happen to me. Um, but that's, that's part of why I ended up doing that. But it, it turned out for the best. And, and now I'm pursuing a master's degree in literature, which I'm able to now round out my education creatively. So it's kind of been the perfect scenario. I'm sure you get annoyed at a certain point with people <laughs> saying this. You're still young. I am still young. But it is probably annoying the number of people who are like, oh my gosh, you've done so much and you're so young. You're like, I don't feel young. I feel like I'm working. I'm at this weird point in my life where I, I'm trying to figure out whether or not I still feel young. <laughs> and, I, and I know I do and I know I have a long way to go but I'm at a point where I'm starting to be able to handle things in a different way mm -hmm. and it's it's a very interesting transition so here you are you've got multiple degrees yes. you are on the number one show on freeform right now mm -hmm. what else would you like to accomplish so much I'd like to direct I'd like to produce I'd like to see stories that I create being made into into these projects um, I'd also I'm pursuing music as well so I'm... You play a number of instruments? I play a little piano, a little guitar, but I write music and I sing. So I'm, I'm finally finding my sound and my voice. I've been working on it for years now. So within the next year, I'll be releasing music as well. I'm a perpetual student, and that's sort of what this industry provides me. What's your biggest fear? 
uh, becoming stagnant is I think my biggest fear, not growing, not learning, not changing. I, I talked to a number of different actors and people who have gotten into theater or television or in Hollywood and film and one of the things they talk a lot about is rejection. Mm -hmm. Hearing no a lot. Mm -hmm. Have you dealt with that at this point? Oh yes. Yeah, I've dealt with that from the very start of my career. I had people tell me over and over again that, you know, it wasn't right or it wasn't going to happen or, or things like this. But I did get some very good advice from one of an actor I worked with back in Kansas City. And she told me very early on in my career that an actor's job is to audition. And your job is to create these characters and go into that room for the 10 minutes that you're in there and do what you love and to, to share your whatever it is that you love to do with those people in that room. And then if you get that job, if you have that opportunity, if it works out, then that's great. That's something special. But your job is to continue creating characters and working and improving and learning. And that's the perspective through which I've pursued this career. And that's helped me immensely. And there's so much. You have to have such a thick skin in this industry. You have to let things roll off your back. You have to let things go. Because there are so many factors that go into these decisions that have nothing to do with you or your abilities or anything. That's great advice Thank that you. she gave yeah. and that you're giving. Let's talk about Shadowhunters. I think you understand this world. How do you but get you into don't. character for this role? <laughs> Actually, Clary is a character that's very close to who I am as a human being. Hmm. She's very driven. She's very passionate, which can be a blessing and a curse because it, you know, it helps because I can relate to her on so many levels, but when it gets to the emotional side of things, a lot of things hit very close to home. Hmm. So, what was what was a recent scene that hit really close to home? Something that's very interesting is the, the mother-daughter relationship mm -hmm. on the show this season. I missed you so much. Because at the end of last season, Clary's mother, who'd been basically incapacitated for the entire first season, woke up. And now she's awake, but Clary's a different person. And so seeing that, her struggling with having her mother see her as a shadow hunter and see her as an adult and, and see her, her growth and recognize that, it's very interesting. I, I don't necessarily have that with my own mother, but I, I, every young person goes through that in some capacity. So my mom and I get along fabulously well. What does she think about all of this success? She's, it's so interesting. My whole family's in science and medicine. So this whole world is completely different to them. Do they watch you? Um, Do they see all of your projects? They're so sweet. They're so supportive. I love them to death. But it's, it's amazing. My grandmother will call me every time after an episode airs and she's like, that demon was so scary, but I loved that. <laughs> it was so great, and it, what's going to happen next week? And I'm like, Grandma, I can't tell you. You have to watch the show. But it's it's so great because my family ha has now accepted this as a career and not just as something that I'm doing in the meantime. Mm -hmm. um, but I've, it's interesting that you say accepted yeah. because I come from a family also that's very into the harder sciences mm -hmm. and things like that, mm -hmm. and I bet at some point along the way when you said, I want to be an actor, they might have been a little nervous that, well, this isn't necessarily a career. It can be a, a passion of yours, but it's not necessarily something that's going to pay the bills at the end of the day. And that's exactly what it was. They were supportive. They said, go follow your dreams, do what you love. Just make sure you, to, you go to school and you get an education and you have a degree that you can use in the future in case this doesn't work out. But since doing a little night music since doing the Maze Runner film now that I've done Shadow Hunters and that it keeps continuing and it, it has been successful. It's something that now they're recognizing the longevity that this can have and the build that this career can be and that it is a marathon, not a sprint, but that, you know, it will be something that's gonna last at least for the meantime. What would a dream role be for you? Oh, see for me that's so hard to quantify because I love diversity. Do you wanna be work. the bad guy? The bad girl? I want to do everything, and that's what's so great about it. I, I used to play the mean girl a lot before Shadowhunters. And Why do you think that is? I don't know. I've never been able to figure it out. I have a lot of fun when I play the mean girl, so maybe that's why. <laughs> um, I, I love being the person that you love to hate, but it, I love playing roles that are challenging, roles that are complicated. What's the toughest lesson you've had to learn along the way? I think the toughest lesson I've had to learn is to stay true to yourself no matter what the pressures are. And that's something that 
I never really recognized until really the last year. It's very easy to lose track of who you are and to, to what makes you you. But that's something actually Angela Lansbury, when I was working on Little Night Music, she told me that a long time ago. I asked her, what's the one piece of advice that you would give to someone like me? And she said, what makes you different is why you're here. Everybody can be what everybody wants them to be. Nobody can be you, only you can be you. And there's so much pressure to conform. There is. And that's something, no matter whether you're in the entertainment industry or any industry, no matter who you are, what you're doing, what makes you you is what makes you special and only you can, can have that essence.